Oh, Brennan, firstly, sorry for being late. Um, one of the reasons we are preparing for that star-studded site. Uh, and Merry Christmas to all of you as well. Yeah, the nice thing for me is um, I said to the guys, please look forward to this game. Um, you don't often get the opportunity to play against uh, Thomas, uh, Eben, uh, Sia, Kulisi, um, all the guys that spring walks. And that's the only place that you can really measure yourself is when you play against those guys. So for us, uh, we're looking forward to the game. Uh, it's going to be a game where we can measure ourselves, see where our shortcomings are, where, what things are working and not working for us. And and also for the, the, the players, that opportunity, you know, um, if you look at a guy like uh, Notis, even Etzebeth, you know, he can measure himself where he's in his career. A uh, great opportunity to play against those players. So uh, we're looking forward to the game. We know it's going to be physical. They've got a great side um, and playing down in Durban is not easy, uh, but it's something that we look forward to. Morgan. Thanks. Hi, coach. Um, I, I, just to follow on on what uh, Brendan asked there, uh, it's been now, uh, I think last year was the last time that you guys beat the South African side in, uh, at this level. Um, is that starting to build a, a certain degree of pressure on you, on you guys as well, that uh, from a um, psychological point of view, uh, that you guys are desperate now to beat the South African side? It's definitely important for us. Um, you're right. I mean, we beat the Stormers down in Cape Town, and after that, we haven't won a game against the South African sides. Uh, it's that little bit of uh, mental block. You know, we're playing against our own players. When we play the overseas players, the guys are more freely open and and, and just compete and, and go for it. Um, and, and the mental block is there for South African sides, but it's not something that's going to keep us from fighting. You know, we want to be competitive. We want to stay in the race, make sure that uh, the opportunities are there, we take it. Uh, Sharks coming up this weekend. It's a good opportunity for us to show uh, what we've prepared for. Uh, we we know what they're going to bring. You know, they've got a good kicking game. Uh, they've got great backs, good forwards. Uh, we know the mall is very important for them. So it's going to be a case for us um, to get over that mental block, is to start well and, and to stay in the race as long as possible and hopefully get to win. Thanks, Morgan. Ross, you can go. How's it, guys? Thanks, Nelly. So, how's it, Albert? Um, you know, you guys have, uh, since coming back from the international break, four games unbeaten uh, and also in the state front say, over the past weekend. Has that build-up also been pretty confident in heading into the Sharks game for the guys? And uh, do you think playing against a different opposition from France has maybe uh, given you guys a bit of a boost and a bit extra going into uh, this Friday's match? Yeah, you know, we don't want to dwell on the on the fact that we won the four games, or actually, you know, we had the one draw against um, the Dragons. But based on that, we're not happy with our performance. You know, we managed to beat those teams, and and rightly so, we should beat them. Uh, disappointing with the draw against the Dragons, and and we know there's things that we have to work on. So if we take it for granted that we're happy with those wins and and going into this weekend's game thinking it's just going to happen, it's not going to happen for us. Um, we had work ons to do, individual work ons, team work ons, game plan. So there's a lot of things that we worked on and 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 tried to get it rectified this weekend against the Sharks. So it's, it's going to be a tough one for us. Um, yes, we we take the confidence from. From not losing, but we we can't take the confidence into this game thinking it's going to be an easy game against um, the Sharks. They are well well coached side now, and and they're on a level of that it's going to be hard playing down in Durban. Thank you, Ross. Uh, Carl, you're up next. Albert, thanks a lot for the opportunity. One of the work ons even said after the uh, the match last uh, was Friday Saturday is discipline. Um, one question, the type of rugby or your game plan that you play, doesn't that require the guys to take more risks? And yeah, maybe everybody's a bit too harsh on them for conceding one or two extra penalties. Uh, I hear what you're saying, and I don't think it, it's harsh on the players. You know, the, the penalties we give away is actually silly penalties. You know, some of them stuff is not rolling away. It's just that second too long that we're lying there, putting our hands in the ruck when we shouldn't. It's the decision making. So we've got a young team that are growing. We've got great players in our squad. And it's more a case of as we move forward, these players learn from it and they get better. So the game plan is there, but we, we have to work within the game plan. We have to operate in, in a system where everyone understands their role and what's expected from them. So 
if we get those opportunities to jackal, it's got to be a clear and obvious opportunity because they're so strict on the rules now that if you're off your feet. So we've given away silly penalties, and that has actually put us on a lot of pressure because we tend to give these penalties away more on defence than on attack, and, and then we give the, the opposition more opportunities to put us under pressure. So that will come over time, you know, educating the players during the week, sitting with them and, and discussing the penalties and what happened in that situation is something that we want to create that scenarios and making sure that they learn from it and actually get better in making those decisions. Thank you, Carl. Um, uh, Emmanuel Chitukas just joined us. Uh, Lloyd, you up next. Uh, thanks very much, uh, uh, Albert or Emmanuel. I suppose it could be for either of, either of you. Um, but if you could just speak to the unique nature of the week um, and and the fixture, um, you know, a couple of days before Christmas, has that in any way, um, if not made it a challenging, uh, you know, preparation week? Uh, ju just, uh, I suppose, um, you know, it, it must feel a bit different. Yeah, I was fortunate to play for six years in, in Japan and, and my first year it was quite a surprise that we had captains run on the 25th of December and we played on the 26th, so it was quite an awkward feeling. Um, it's new for us, you know, we started last year and this is our second year we're going into it. Um, the difficult part about it and the challenging side is that the families, you know, your wife and kids, they're on holiday and the kids don't understand why dad must go to work and, and train or why he can't go to the beach with them. Uh, and uh, so it makes it hard for our players, but it's something that I think the longer we stay in this competition and happens, the more custom we're going to get to it. Um, it. It is a mindset change because nothing happens. Uh, nothing changed basically from preparing for the games. We still have our training sessions. It's just what do you do in that off time? How much time do you really spend with your family and, and preparing for the game? So we, we do try to manage the players, give them extra time time off, an extra day off just with the family because we know it's uh, it's that transition for us from playing um, over this uh, December period now that's going to make it difficult for us going forward. But it's something that we keep in mind with the players as well to keep them fresh. Thanks. Man, my perspective? Um, yeah, for me, um, I have a completely different perspective to the coach. Um, this is my complete first time I'm playing over the festive. Um, but yeah, ultimately, I think um, you know, listen to coach um, Coach speak, I think um, our coach has experience, so you just learn from him. And uh, obviously, um, you know, it's ultimately it is your job. Um, and, you know, you know, the job is the first thing that uh, comes first. So I think for us, it's just um, coming in and, you know, just keeping the main thing the main thing. And, yeah, ultimately, I think it's my first time. So I just have to see. And obviously, the more seasons that come, um, I'll just get a lot more accustomed to. OK, guys, we'll take three more. That'll be Morgan, Ross and then Carl. Thanks. Uh, Coach, just a, a few words on uh, JC and also Michael joining the, the squad and how they're going to get in, uh, into, <laughs> integrate into the team um, going forward in the next few weeks. You're talking about uh, JC Petrus and Michael van Vieren? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, so JC is a great uh, um, add-on for us, you know, being that sixth position. Um, he played brilliantly in the sevens and I think, um, you know, a lot of teams talk about a feature uh, JC brings that, it brings a line out option as well for us, you know, in front of the line outs and um, brings a massive work rate um, that is bringing to the team as a young player. So we're quite happy to have him into the team. So we're going to slowly bring him in, into the system, getting used to everything. Michael brings a lot of experience, obviously, from overseas. You know, he's been played in those conditions and he's a senior in the team now that that brings all that calmness and, and, and leadership for us as well. So having him here gives us a little bit more inside info to playing overseas. Um, as with this competition, you know, we're going to play a lot more up in, in Europe. So it's it's great additions for us having them part of the team. Sorry, is he clear to play in the, the Challenge Cup, uh, Michael uh, and JC for that matter? Are they allowed to play in the, the, that competition? I think they're clear to play. I don't, I'm not sure if JC is registered yet, as he's only joined us um, yesterday. He joined us, yeah. So registration might be not be in the first week, but um, once he's registered, Michael is registered, he played EPCR, and I think he can play URC for us, yeah. All right, Ross, and then we'll wrap it up then with Carl. Thanks, Shani. So, how's it, Manu? Um, you know, you've had a pretty good season so far, um, and you've had a lot of game time. Have you quite enjoyed your season to date? Uh, are you happy with the way you're playing? And uh, looking forward to coming up against your brother this weekend. That's going to be an interesting one after playing in the same team for the last few years. Um, yeah, for sure. Um, just to answer your question about my performance, I think... Um, 
I would say I'm I'm happy, but I'm not content. Uh, I think it's one thing that the coaches also drive on their side, you know, um, to never be content or complacent with your performance, and to just always strive to get better each week. Um, so yeah, my, my for me, my goal is always just come out each week, and how, however many minutes I get, I just you know make the most of it, and you know, I'll obviously just play as hard as I can for my teammates. Um, and then obviously with Vince. Mm-hmm. Uh, coming up this weekend, um, yeah, for the past two years, we got used to you know playing with each other. So now comes the time we have to play against each other. Um, yeah, we, we, have, like, we have spoken about it and it is something that we are both excited to to encounter. Um, but then again, it is just a game. I know our families are quite excited as well, my, my brother, my mom and my dad. Everyone's quite excited to watch the game. But um, yeah, I think I can speak for the both of us. It's ultimately just another fixture. Um, I'm going out there to represent uh, the franchise. It's just do my best as I have um, over the past uh, couple of weeks. Thank you, Ross. Carl, uh, you've got the final one for the day. Oh, that the session, at least. Yeah. So if you want to give it to somebody else, I'm fine with that. Thanks a lot. Uh, Vim, I see your hand is up. <laughs> I'll take it, Nis. My hand's been up for you for a while now. Oh, Brendan, I thought Jan was still up from the first one. Yeah. Okay, let's go. <laughs> let's go, no, Brendan. I wanted, I wanted to ask a follow-up, but uh, <laughs> yeah. anyway, don't worry. No, okay. no, I'm done. Oh, do you you, you yeah, spoke... Brendan, Brendan, you'll go, and then and we'll close with Brendan. Okay. Sorry, no, no. I think mine's a mistake. I didn't raise my hand. Uh, <laughs> okay, Brendan, you'll take us on there. It's raised with me. Okay, okay. cool. Um, Thanks, well, Brendan, yeah. Oh, but just, uh, sorry, just, I know you're talking about uh, how you've experienced it in Japan before, but just on the psychological side, because I, I know how the rest of this country operates in December, and I know even us, I'm struggling to be motivated to write. It feels like the whole world's on holiday, but you're still working. Um, is is there something psychologically that you, or do you bring in something different in the week, or is it just stick to the same things? Because surely, I mean, we're all feeling this time of year is probably where we should all be on the beach. Yeah, it's it's like Manu said earlier, no, the main thing stays the main thing. So um there's the the couple of off days we're giving them extra with their family, but the rest stays the same. I don't think we're gonna try and uh, build a special program over this time of the year and trying to make it work for the players. Um as as we go on over time, they'll get more accustomed to it. So we're trying to keep it the same as much as possible. The only exception is that we do give those extra off days to spend time with their families. Right, guys, are we happy? Just so, so I can just follow up there. I just wanted to find out um, mm. uh, injuries. Uh, um, what's his name? Your center? He slipped. His name slipped. My Inku. 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 Yeah. Yes. How's he yeah. doing? Yeah, he's he's done well. We did some scans on him, so um, it's not as long as we we thought it's going to be. So uh, potentially you could have played um, this weekend, strapping it up, but um, there's a bit of swelling, and I think it's it's not worth the risk um, as the season is still long. So we're going to look at next weekend. Um, Possibility of playing next weekend. Thanks, thanks, guys. Thanks, Brennan. Thank you. Uh, Albert, Manu, thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Merry Christmas. Thank you so thank much. You. Good luck. Up, guys. up next, I've got uh, JC Pretorius. The man himself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, MS Lions new recruit. We announced him today. Uh, JC Pretorius. Um, we will take. Let's take about four questions, guys, before we wrap up. Just one. Uh, let me just allow a few people in. All right, um, we'll take Carl and then Ross for JC. JC, firstly, welcome at the Lions. Um, but a question we have to ask is, you or you were a superstar in sevens rugby. There was no question of being selected, of not being selected. Now you turn to the 15-man code where at the Emirates Lions, you've got Jakob Grill and one or two other sixes that will definitely not uh, uh, um, give their places away without a big fight. And then the rest of South Africa, there is so many good loose forwards. Why did you do it? Um, obviously, it's, uh, it's a massive honour and a privilege to be associated with the with the Lions, and especially they fit my my running style of rugby. And um, yeah, a guy like Yaku and Manny that's playing um, six now as well. Um, yeah, um, I said to myself, I won't rush anything coming into the system. Um, and yeah, 
um, learning quite a lot from the guys and uh, especially a guy like Yaku and um, that was a role model for me and is still a role model for me. So yeah, the guys has accepted me with um, open arms and yeah, I'm happy to train with the team. Thanks, Carl. Ross? Thanks. How's it, JC? Um, obviously, uh, you've come in at a very hectic time in the, the comp in, well, uh, two competitions now, the URC and the Challenge Cup. The Lions are going to be six weeks away, uh, two obviously in South Africa and then four on the road overseas. Um, do you think your uh, tra traveling with the Blitz box will sort of help you uh, be prepared for that kind of hectic travel, travel schedule? And uh, are you sort of ready to be thrown straight into the the fray, you know, if they decide to do some rotation over the coming weeks, because it's going to be a pretty hectic six week uh, period in a row. Yeah, um, I would definitely say that uh, the sevens helped me, especially with um, um, getting used to time zones as well. I mean, uh, like a dif big difference for like New Zealand and Australia it was 12 hours. So they they helped us a lot about managing your work, oh, your load sleep and uh, how you can um, climatize on uh, the uh, time zone and yeah I know there's a lot of rugby to be played but firstly for me it's just um, starting into the system and learning and adapting to everything and then um, taking it from there. So and then just a follow-up I know that there are quite a few guys from the seven system who have joined the 15s over the past few years are you in contact with any of those guys uh, to maybe help you and give you a few uh, hints and uh, tips on uh, getting into the 15s game again like maybe Fernacock at the Sharks and Oaks like that? Yeah um, so I definitely chat with uh, Maris often and especially Kwaka um, he's also a role model for me and um, I mean what a better place to be um, he was also at the, at the Lions he knows the ins and the outs in the, in the system so he can help me a lot with the with the system and especially my role as six flag. Right, guys, thank you very much. Any other questions before we close? Uh, yeah, just one for Morgan, me. Morgan, the final one. Uh, that's okay. Uh, it was Walter. Morgan and, Walter. and Walter. Oh, okay. Walter, let's sorry. Walter, Walter, let's go with Walter. Uh, yeah, JC, just uh, from me, I wanted to know personally, uh, what is it that you think you need to adapt uh, uh, to change your game from coming from sevens going to fifteens? Um. Um, definitely uh, for me it's just um, learning the calls and uh, adapting to the system the defensive structure as well and uh, especially attacking because um, um, I know in attack um, the loose force has a different role as a seventh guy so yeah uh, that's the main job for me as well. Thank you Walter. Morgan you can have the last one. Yeah thank you. Uh, my question was pretty similar it's just what type of skills do you think you will be bringing to to the Lions and how do you apply your seven skills to the system that they have set up? Yeah so I um, started in um, started the training yesterday and um, we had a session and I was already in and it felt like um, because of um, the awareness that you have to need to have in the sevens uh, everything happens very slow in 15 so uh, I'll definitely bring in um, a lot of vocals to the team and um, chat on defense as well on attack. And um, it's uh, definitely a work ethic um, like like Kwaka and um, um, regarding poaching the ball and stuff like that. And just, yeah. All right, gents, thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate your time. Uh, the recording will follow shortly. Good afternoon. Thank you so much. Thanks. 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 Thanks.